Hi, my name is Adam Hanlon. I'm the editor of WebPixel, and I'd like to welcome you all to WebPixel, WebPixel Live. Um, we have our resident expert in all things underwater, Alex Mustard, alongside me. Hello, Alex. How are you? Hi, Adam. Good to be here. Nice to see you, as always. Um, so um, the question that we sort of thought we might pose today and discuss today was to do with the value of housing vacuum systems. Um, and so I guess I think I'll throw that straight to Alex, as I always do, pass it over to him um, to see what see what you think, what the value of, of, um, of vacuums is. Um, I think there's one, one thing I would say to sum them up straight away is that they are addictive. Um, whether they're, you know, absolutely essential or not, um, it's hard to maybe argue, you know, logically, but addictive they certainly are. And you get very reassured by having them on your camera. Yeah. Actually, on my, my last morning diving um, just this week, I, I stupidly loaded my zoom lens at the wrong position. And I don't have a zoom gear on my 8 to 15. And it was just zoomed in slightly from 15. And so I, I came out of the water straight away, and one of my buddies, um, um, Nick, hadn't gone in yet. So I said, oh, Nick, 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 while you're still dry, can you depressurize my housing, um, put the zoom to the right position, and close it back up again? Um, and, you know, he, he did that. And I said, oh, just quickly suck a vacuum on it. Um, but we didn't, I didn't bother resetting the test. All that I cared about was that you could pull a vacuum. Mm. So, uh, you know, yes, they are really valued. Yes, I want my housing to have a vacuum when I go in the water but I'm not someone who needs to watch the light all the way through the dive. And in fact, then the light was flashing red or dive, but I knew why it was doing so yeah. because I I depressurized it and I couldn't be bothered to open the back of the housing to reset it. I so I, I guess we should, before we sort of discuss our views on them, we should sort of explain to those who maybe haven't experienced a vacuum on a housing, what they are. Yeah. Um, and certainly, you know, they're not a new thing in underwater photography. The first person I saw using one was um, Peter Schoons, the legendary BBC cameraman. And on his very expensive cameras, even before HD, but, but the, the old TV cameras were very expensive, he used to always fit vacuum systems to his housings. Yep. Um, yep. And they were all homemade housings. And, and to be honest, I don't think anyone had more floods than he did with all the experimental gear he was using. But he used to always have a vacuum. And his, he used to always have a pump. There was always this electric pump that he plugged in and that would suck the vacuum in the housing um, before he dived. Yeah. Um, and, but they didn't really proliferate on underwater housings. Hoogie Fox started introducing them about 15 years ago. I, I think Gates had them before that with the video okay. housings, big video houses, yeah. but, but yeah, I mean, 15, 20 years. Yeah. 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 And then I don't, and then it was actually, there was probably this period for about four or five years where I remember, you know, on wet pixel, we'd often have Hoogie Fox members going, why doesn't anyone else have these vacuums? We love them. Did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, the, the, the cynical amongst us said, well, actually, the problem is, is that maybe maybe some housings had a locking mechanism that actually didn't work after one dive and, <laughs> um, and they needed a vacuum system to, to keep the locking system working. Possibly. But anyway, that's 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 pure conjecture, of course. Yeah. But um, but about, you know, within, I would say, the last five to ten years, they've begun to proliferate a lot more. And certainly five years ago, the odd person had them. Now, Everybody has Everybody's them got one, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it, and it must be the I, most I sold you, accessory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, you've said to me many times, you know, they're there to check you've put your housing together. Yeah, they're not there, you know, to 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 do anything more than that. Um, I do think they have a couple of small benefits uh, um, ab above that. One is, I think they they do hold housings together. So yep. if you have dodgy catches or you happen to knock those catches open during a dive, yep. or you have a um, a port system that can be easily rotated or even not easily but accidentally yep. rotated or Just knocked off. off. Yeah. Yeah. Vacuum systems can be really good for that. Yep. And if you're someone like you you're me and you're trying new gear quite a lot of the time, you're not using, you know, always gear that you know is super reliable. Yep. Um you're testing new equipment, new ideas. Um actually having a vacuum system is really reassuring when you're maybe putting together rather unusual setups on your kit system. Yeah. So I think they have really good advantages like that. Um, and something that I learned on one of our wet pixel lembe workshops was 
Lembe, when you you know used to do dive there, you'd always get a lot of sand in your O-rings. Yeah. And one thing, and, and so you were always kind of cleaning your O-rings after every dive. Yeah. And one thing that Back I really sand. noticed that when everyone suddenly went over to having vacuums on their housing, is suddenly the O-rings would come out of the water clean. Yeah. Because the, the housing would be compressed before it went in the water. And it kept the housing, the two halves of the housing pulled tightly together. Yeah. And that stopped sand going in. And you didn't have that same problem of having to clean the O-rings all the time. Yeah. But the main advantage of them is it, it gives you that reassurance, particularly pre-dive, that everything is together and you're ready to go. And I think that probably brings me to the to the drawback slightly with with vacuums. I mean, um, so you know, the goal of the vacuum is is to double check that you've assembled the housing correctly, that you've put the bits together, that it is therefore waterproof. Once you've proved that, it's actually very unlikely that it's going to leak. So you know, a vacuum test over say five or six minutes, um, once you've assembled it, it's fine. That should prove the equation. It should say, therefore, this housing's not going to leak. Um, and, and the problem seems to come in in that, you know, well, there's two potential problems on the backup. The first one is that um, if you do get the flashing light goes off, red or whatever the color is with the particular vacuum system you're using, it's very hard at that point to concentrate on what else you're doing because you just lost vacuum. Now, a lot of the um, vacuum systems do have temperature compensation, but in my experience, a lot of it doesn't work as well when we're going from warm to cold. It works fine in warm, in tropical water where we're going from, from warm outside to cooler water. When you're going from cold air temperatures to warmer water temperatures, it doesn't work as well. Um, so I didn't know they had temperature compensation. Yeah, they I do have temperature compensation. Yeah. Um, so, so, um, but I have had them giving false positives. Now, okay, you say, well, that's that's arguably more conservative. It's doing a better job of looking after me. It's giving me a false positive. But that's not always the case. You know, if you're on assignment somewhere and you're trying to catch catch particular images, and the camera's busy telling you, look, I'm about to flood, and you have to get out of the water. That's a big deal. That's you know, that's actually a, a problem. Um, so, mm -hmm. so the first problem is the risk of false positives, and and and. and as I say, with if, if as long as it holds vacuum for five or six minutes once it's once it's once it's been made, that's for me. I, I put it together right. That's fine. After mm -hmm. that, I don't really need it to give me any more information. So I could so ignore you're it. You're kind of more a fan of one which maybe has a you know a, a light or a va um, a gauge, so that you plug it into the housing, you, you pull your vacuum, yeah. you go back five minutes later to check it, yeah. and then you don't have any. Yeah. distracting feedback during the dive. So, so Backscatter do one that, that, that works like that, and the Seacam one is the same. It's an electronic version where it, it, it tests over a period of time and then says right after five minutes or whatever the period is, you know, you're good to go. Um, and I, I, So that that removes the risk of the false positive, which which I personally is, it is a bigger problem in some ways as, as, as no, no test at all. Um, I, mean, this... I have to say that I have seen, you know, I obviously do a lot of dives with a lot of photographers. So I kind of see, you know, random examples of all sorts of things. But I, I've seen housings with plenty of water in them that still got, you know, a bright green light saying, <laughs> oh, I've go. got back. Yeah, okay. Um, you know, so these things do happen, in, you know, in unusual situations. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have to say, though, I think for the majority of photographers, the majority of the time, the vacuum is an addictive and a very reassuring thing to have. Yes. And I think particularly when you're new, having that constant reassurance actually does help a lot of people. Okay. You know, you, you argue, you know, yes, it can give those false positives, but for maybe less experienced people, I do think it's um, it gives them some reassurance that everything's going okay. But that also then, so the, so the other, the, the addictive, the sort of crack cocaine nature of vacuum is, is, <laughs> is a bit of a problem as well, because because it, it also becomes a situation where people will refuse to dive because they've forgotten the vacuum pump or, um, mm. you know, um, and okay, there are ways you can work around that. But, um, and that always strikes me as a shame as well in, in that, you know, for many, many years, the vast majority of us dive without vacuums and, and managed to keep the water out of our housings most of the time. Um, so, so you know in fact really what we need to do is try to revert back to the idea of spending the time and making sure that we put our equipment together correctly and using the vacuum to back it up and if we can't for some reason pull a vacuum be prepared to trust our own abilities with the equipment uh, rather than relying on the vacuum it's definitely to me it seems a great shame that people have to forego or are willing to forego diving opportunities photographic opportunities because they can't pull a vacuum um, mm. because they've forgotten the pump or the pump's broken or whatever and mm. that that strikes me as being a shame um and as yeah, you say I mean, I, I, systems out there 
Oh, sorry. Um, the ones that I choose to fit to my houses are the naughty cam ones. Mm. And I, I like them for a couple of reasons. First of all, you know, in extremis, you don't need a pump or any equipment. You can depressurize the housing and pressurize it again uh, um, um, orally. Uh, I, I was hoping that was a more <laughs> delicate way of saying it, but probably isn't. Um, but yeah, so, and, but I think that's a really valuable thing. If you're out on a boat, you don't have the gear. Yeah. The good thing with the, with the naughty cam system that I like is I can, I can depressurize my housing, get in and fix something, yeah. and I can pressurize it up even if I haven't got the gear with me. Yeah. Um, I think nearly all of the systems, if you actually forget the cap that goes on the vacuum that's thing, they, point, don't, yeah. they still um, don't leak. I've done quite a lot of dives like that, not, usually no, or always noticing obviously halfway through or occasionally right at the end of the dive. Yeah. If you do do that, certainly with the system I use, the Nauticam one, which I'm familiar with, it's well worth giving it a good wash, that top area with fresh water afterwards, yeah. um, before you let the air um, back in, yeah. and then dry it as well. And that's one of the few times I will use a bit of air, compressed air from an air gun or something, because the air, if, you, if it's got water around that valve and you start depressurizing the housing, it sucks in and blows that a spray of water over the housing. Yeah. So in that case, I want to make sure that's very dry before I open the housing. Yeah. So if I have dived with the cap off, I'll give it a good wash. But it's, it's absolutely fine to dive it with the cap off. But don't, on the dive, start pressing the button. Yeah, I think uh, two <laughs> things, yeah. If you press the button, the water will go in, so it'd be very, yeah, even very, bumping it would be a nightmare. And it would be sucked in, yeah, yeah. extra far. Yeah, not yeah, no, not not a good idea. And the second second thing about it is there is a depth limit on them as well. Um, in at some point, I believe that the, the spring tension that holds the the little vacuum button open will at some point be overcome and water will come in. So, so okay, I think with a cap on though, they'd be okay. Oh, with a cap uh, on, it's fine. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's yeah, it's it's, not, it's without the cap. If you just got the button exposed, hmm. it, 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 there is a depth limit. So, be aware if, of that. if you have those ones, I forget the name of the the valve. It's the valve that you also get that pressure that they use to press pressurized fridges and things it's that metal one i used uh, to have some like lock yeah the Swage inside lock. if you if you've got one of those and you need to open your housing in an emergency and you don't have the correct pump with you yeah. if you actually have a sharp end of a, a point yeah. and you push it in there and push yeah. the metal then inside the circle yeah. it's kind of a metal bar that goes across yeah. if you push that metal bar with a thing it will depressurize the housing yeah, yeah so if you have one of those and you're stuck on the boat and you need to get in the housing yeah. you know then depressurize it and you know, and then you can dive the housing without it being pressurized afterwards. Yeah. If you need it, you know, if you left your lens cap on or forgotten the battery or, or whatever it is. Um, so that's a useful tip that they aren't locked forever. Yes, no, absolutely. It's worth mentioning, obviously, that um, the the um, the crucial ingredient of of, of every underwater photography is they should always have a picture on their memory card before the dive that shows that everything's working always. <laughs> Um, Absolutely, always. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's why. That's why I, I don't know about any of these ways of getting into housing. <laughs> yeah. when I'm soaking wet, and yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, the, the one this week actually jumping in with my fisheye zoomed to the wrong position was very, yeah. very annoying. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, you're in good yeah. company. I think we've all done it. Yeah. Well, yeah. Each and every dive. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, a little bit of a few thoughts there about vacuums. Um, I, I think. Um, that you know they are a tool um, and, and and they're an important tool, but I think we'd hopefully try and break down the over reliance on them. There we are, um, break the addiction. Um, so uh, thank you, Alex, um, and um, I'm sure we can see lots of your work on Instagram at um, Alex Mustard One on Instagram and Alex underscore Mustard on Twitter. I'm getting good at learning these you now. Oh yeah, it's, it sounds sounds like you rehearsed it. So mm. thank you very much, Alex. Um, Thanks very much to Chris at Lembe Resort who sponsored this episode. Um, please give this episode a like if you enjoyed it, um, you found it useful, and feel free to add comments below to discuss anything else about vacuums um, in this, the comment section on the video. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you again soon.